Station Houston on two. Are you ready for the event? Houston Station, I'm ready for the event. Shortwave Podcast, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call Station for a voice check. Station, this is Regina Barber with the Shortwave Podcast. How do you hear me? Hi, Regina. This is Laurel O'Hara. I have you loud and clear. Welcome aboard, Space Station. Oh, my gosh. That's a, that's quite the welcome. I like it. <laughs> um, Laurel, how are you doing? Uh, I am excellent. Uh, we have a busy day on board Space Station today getting ready for our Crew 8 to get here tomorrow morning. Yeah, and I wanted to ask you specifically, though, this is your first time, right, in orbit. So what was it like to look out that window for the first time, and what did you see? Well, the first time I got to look out the window was on the Soyuz spacecraft on my way to Space Station. <laughs> and uh, first I saw Earth, and that was amazing. Um, you know, you see it in photographs, but that doesn't compare at all to seeing it in person for the first time in 3D. And I just saw the ocean and the clouds, this blue and white marble against the blackness of space. Um, and it was one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen. And then shortly after that, uh, we arrived to Space Station and you know, we were working procedures and looking at our displays. And then suddenly I looked out the window, I had a window right next to my head. Um, and I turned and looked out the window and it was just filled with a solar array. Uh, one of our gold solar arrays, and uh, that was that was surprising and also beautiful. Um, I was surprised uh, just to see Space Station in real life. Um, it's this uh, technological marvel that humans built, um, and simultaneously something I've never seen before in space, uh, but also so familiar from all of our training on the ground. It was like seeing an old friend uh, for the first time in a really long time. I, I bet it was like very much like a movie, like you actually could be there. Absolutely. So since we're a podcast and you're talking to me within the space station, I'm looking at you right now on the, the YouTube and there's just a ton of wires and there's all this stuff. Can you explain like where you are in the space station and what all that stuff is? Not not every single thing, but you know, <laughs> just... Yeah, so I'm in the Columbus module um, that's operated by the European Space Agency. Uh, we do a lot of science in here, uh, and NASA, NASA has some racks, and then the rest of the racks are ESA's racks. Um, we have a couple of the highlights. We have the biofabrication facility where we are able to 3D print human tissue, uh, which I think is fascinating. Uh, we've had a couple yeah. weeks up here working with biofab facility uh, where we're trying to 3D print human heart tissue. Uh, we also have behind me a bunch of our um, human research racks, uh, which I'm very much involved in that with our Cypher research study, where we're studying all aspects of human health in the microgravity environment. Um, and then off to my right here, we have a rack where we just wrapped up some plant, uh, a plant experiment where we were studying uh, the immune system response of plants in space. And I, and I see when you're taking a break from talking to me, you're like twirling the mic and it's floating in space. It looks amazing. Um, but I want to talk about a little bit more of the science for a science podcast. So That never gets um, old. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> um, so the stuff you're talking about right now, you've done a lot of research on how space affects the body. Can you tell me more about what you've learned and what has surprised you up there? Uh, so some of the research that's being done on me is, well, pretty much everything. Uh, <laughs> researchers on the ground are studying, for example, how my brain adapts from a 2D environment on Earth to the 3D environment of space stations. So I have did a series of tests on the ground uh, that s sort of tested how I kind of move, navigate my way through different environments, both 2D and 3D, using computer games. And then I'm doing the same things up here. So we're trying to understand um, how the human brain, you know, kind of remaps its environment 
from a 2D to a 3D environment. And that was one of the, I think, most surprising things when I got up here because, and we all experienced this, when we first get up here, um, it's really easy to get lost or confused about where you are on space station. When we do our training on the ground, we always train with, you know, there's an up and a down and a right and a left, or, a, you know, one wall and another wall. And up here, you can be working on any surface. So I can come into a module and one crewmate is working, you know, on one face that might be, you know, the wall on my left and another crewmate is working on what I would normally perceive on the ground as the ceiling. And so it takes a while for your brain to kind of figure that out. But now, no matter where I am on space station, I usually know where I am. So it's neat just to see how that process, how quickly that happened. Yeah, like that you adjusted. Do you dream? Like, do you dream in these weird um, dimensions as well? Yeah, that's a good question. When I first got up here, I was only having Earth dreams, but I think the longer I've stayed up here, I've started to have more and more space dreams. Most of my dreams still take place on Earth, but I have had dreams um, up here in space. I wonder if the neuroscience people want to, want to know that stuff too. But let's actually get to more like scientific thing. How is space actually affecting your body? Like, can you feel it, and what do you do? Yeah, for me, um, I was expecting to feel pretty sick when I first got to space. Surprisingly, I didn't. I felt pretty good um, and feel very fortunate for that. Uh, but as, let's see, as, time's, as time has gone on, we all experience fluid shifts in our body um, where when you're on Earth, gravity tends to keep fluid a little bit lower in your body and everything sort of stays in place. Once you get up to space, uh, that's no longer true. And a lot of the fluid that's usually distributed throughout your body moves into your head and neck region. So uh, we get what, you know, swollen faces a little bit and some congestion. And I have definitely, I've been congested for about a month now and it's just not oh. going away. It's kind of my new normal. And that's really been the biggest impact for me being up here. Um, I haven't, for, I have fortunately haven't experienced things like vision changes, which which are also really common. Uh, we do do a lot of eye exams on a regular basis up here. Yeah, I was reading that and seeing pictures of you all are kind of doing experiments on each other. It's it's, it's how is that? It's super interesting. Uh, we do a lot of eye exams for each other, and we also do a lot of ultrasounds for each other. Uh, for all of that research, we have a remote guider on the ground who talks us through um, the entire procedure. So they're looking at the same screens that we're looking at and helping us find uh, the, the targets that we're trying to um, study in that particular session and also telling us which buttons to push. But we do it so many times that we're all kind of becoming uh, eye and ultrasound technicians. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so, so you're doing other kinds of science too, and um, what kind of other science have you really enjoyed being part of in this mission? Yeah, it's been, it's been very fun to work on all the different uh, experiments that we have on board. Some of my favorite experiments have been the life science experiments that we're doing. Uh, we get to work in the life sciences glove box, which is um, kind of in front of me in the Japanese module. And an example of that was uh, two experiments we did recently. One was Mabel. Um, we, were, we had bone marrow stem cells uh, that we were analyzing. Astronauts lose on average 1 to 2 percent of their bone density during a spaceflight mission. And so the aim of that experiment was to uh, study the mechanisms of bone loss in astronauts in hopes of being able to better treat astronauts as well as um, people on the ground who experience age-related bone loss. Um, another experiment that we did in the Life Sciences glove box was the space age experiment, and in that we are studying age-related liver dysfunction as well as um, age-related changes to the immune system. Um, so I, I, I have more time with you because it's, it's just you today, so I actually want to go back to the space dream, actually. It's my producer. And what is that like? What are space dreams different? How are space dreams different from Earth dreams?
Well, it's um, you're floating. Like I, most of my <laughs> space dreams take place on space station, and it's really funny to me because I'm not claustrophobic, and I really like, you know, caving on Earth, for example, where you're squeezing into tight places. And uh, but most of my space dreams up here have taken place in. Uh, like small compartments on space station where I'm like digging through bags in the rack trying to find something and then I think I get stuck and so I kind of wake up like feeling my way out of the bags in my dream which is really just my sleeping bag in my crew quarters and so I'll wake up in the middle of the night sort of feeling my way around my crew quarters they're not space nightmares but they're not you know pleasant dreams floating looking at earth <laughs> It, it, it comforts me no. that even astronauts have these, like, anxious dreams that I have all the time. <laughs> um, yeah, I should, I should keep a dream journal up here. <laughs> you totally should. The neuroscientists will love it. <laughs> I'm not a neuroscientist. I'm a physicist, so I know nothing. Um, but let's go back to your experiment. So w while being up there in this mission and helping out with all of these life science uh, experiments, has there been findings that have been like um, surprising to you or um, or super interesting? Well, a lot of the research that we do up here, uh, we won't learn the results of until long after our mission, um, okay. and that's because um, up the research that we're doing on board space station, for example, with the life sciences experiments. Uh, we're receiving the cell cultures that we work with on a cargo mission, and then up here we're taking care of them in Life Sciences glove box, uh, removing waste media, you know, feeding the cells basically with new media, and then we're taking samples and freezing those samples, and then e eventually freezing the cell cultures as well. But all of that science gets returned on uh, the SpaceX cargo dragon vehicles. Um, so that gets returned to the researchers on the ground and they're the ones who actually um, analyze those samples. Uh, we are up here on space station. We are the hands and eyes and ears and um, you know observers of all the research going on. What do you mean by media? Like when you feed media to the cells? Is that what you said? Yeah, the media, oh yeah, when I'm talking about media, it's just liquid in a syringe. So we'll take a cell culture, which is uh, just in, you know, a little, bo a small box or compartment, for example, and we will use one syringe to remove the liquid that's in there and then use another sh syringe to push new liquid in. And, and that liquid is like helping it grow, I'm guessing. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's providing nutrients to the cells that are living inside. So, back to the the, the space station. What has been um, the the most surprising thing? And if nothing has been surprising, <laughs> are you expecting? Are you super excited about something in your last month there? Uh, yeah, we've had, there's been plenty of surprises. I think one thing that has been really interesting in space, uh, just from the time that I got here, was time. Uh, I don't know what happens to time up here, but our days, we ha we'll have pretty long work days. Um, and so one of the challenges in the work days, especially when you first get on board, and you're not only learning how to work on space station, where everything is, where equipment stowed, things like that, but also just learning how to live and work in microgravity. So it's kind of like brain overload. Like you get to the end of the day and you are just totally exhausted. Um, but that goes, that gets better and better with each week that you're on space station. And now, um, you know, things that used to just completely wipe me out, um, you know, a, a day that would have early in the mission completely exhausted me now is definitely, it, it feels a lot easier. Um, but so time can go sometimes really slow up here, but then the weeks are just melting by. Like this mission has gone by so incredibly fast. I can't believe that we're already five months in. I can't believe that crew seven is about to head home. We're getting crew eight. Um, it's just flown by in the blink of an eye. So yeah, you talking about time, I, I, you know, how do you expect to feel once you, you leave the space station? Like do you, do you think that your time 
um, will change your perception of time. Now, I think one thing um, that Space Station really makes you feel and appreciate is um, how precious time is. Uh, we really want to savor all of the moments up here, um, each day that we have up here, because it's such a special and unique uh, place and such a unique opportunity to get to have. Um, we want to, you know, savor all those moments. And s similarly, um, it requires, I think I mentioned earlier, a really high level of vigilance. So it's amazing yeah. how fast, uh, when you're working on something on Space Station, how fast a tool can float away that then costs you hours trying to find it, um, or how easy it is just being at this remote outpost. It is for something to, for you to run into a problem or something to break that um, is really challenging to fix. So you have to stay really focused and really vigilant um, all day long. And I think that helps you have this kind of state of being very present and being very mindful um, and just living in the moment. And I think that's um, a really good skill and something that's been really nice on Space Station that I certainly hope to bring back to life on Earth. I, I love that. I need that. Um, in the next few days, like you just said, the next crew comes in. Do you have any advice for them? I'm very excited to see them, and it's uh, this will be. We had the Axiom Three crew here, but uh, getting Crew Eight here, three really good friends, um, and two of them brand new to space, I think is going to be really fun. I'm excited to get to share space station with them and show them around and show them the the you know the loops up here. But um, I think my main piece of advice for them is just going to be to be patient with themselves. Um, it's a challenging new environment to learn how to live and work in and you just have to you know take it slowly take it one activity one day at a time and uh, be very patient with yourself this is my last question what are you most excited about when you get back to earth great question um I am excited for a lot of things. I got a new baby nephew while I was in space, so I'm excited oh, to get to meet him. And I also had a new niece right before this mission, so I'm excited to see her as well. They're, they'll both be at the airport when I get back to Houston. Uh, so that'll be super exciting. And then uh, see my family, see all my friends, see everybody at work, and then also just to experience weather, of course. Um, getting to see all the snowfall over Earth this winter was amazing. I really miss snow. I miss rain, uh, wind through the trees, jumping in cold water, all those things. So I'm excited to get back to our beautiful planet. Thank you so much, Laurel, for talking to us today. I, I really, really appreciate you giving us any time. And thank you. It was great. Thanks for all the questions. <laughs> Hopefully they were good. <laughs> I'll give you a little bit extra time. Yeah, they were, it was excellent. Thanks so much. It was great talking to you. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you. Thank you to Laurel and Shortwave Podcast. Station, we are now resuming operational audio comms.